other than that, we are going to, we're going to do a nice juicy vinyasa flow tonight with an ab focus because that was one of the popular, um, the popular ones that everyone wanted to do. So, bringing yourself onto your mat. Give yourself that nice little wiggle around, shuffle your bum around and just feel your space around you. And also look around, make sure that you've got enough space around the mat that you're not going to crash into doors, windows and walls. Excuse me. Um, also, we're just going to, in the beginning, we are going to take our gate pose on either side of the mat. So you can always change sides. But if you've got quite a bit of space on either side of your mat, that would be really, really lovely. Um, if you can't have space on either side, that's fine. You can just take it uh, sideways on your mat. So bring your palms onto your knees, turn them facing upwards. Give yourself a little circle, a little shift around, just lifting those hips up and down. It's the only time I'm going to tell you it's okay to unglue your hips from the floor. So just give yourself a little shift. Really get into your zone, get into your space. And... Um, and then bring yourself down onto the mat. If seating is not where you want to start today, that is fine. You can start lying, you can start standing. We always start with seated movement though, so you will have to rejoin us on the mat if you don't want to start here. Otherwise, bringing your palms onto your knees, drop those shoulders down, neck nice and long. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Expand your abdomen. And send all of that air down towards the bottom of your lungs, filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And as you exhale, reverse the breath, draw the navel in towards the spine. And close your eyes. And again, the inhale. And exhale. We're starting to tune into our breath, feeling that slow and steady rise and fall of our chest and our abdomen. Feeling that breath wash through you as you inhale, feeling it flow through your body. And as you exhale, feeling it release. Inhale, sitting up nice and tall, lengthening through your spine, but grounding through the sit bone. Lifting up, but grounding down. And drawing those shoulders down your spine. Drawing them down into the mat. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale, draw those shoulders down away from the ears, creating space for your neck to grow long. Just going to check in with our little tension points. Making sure those shoulders are down, the neck is long, the jaw is soft and the back teeth are unclenched. So you don't want those back teeth touching at all. Drop your tongue down away from the roof of your mouth. Maybe you're opening your mouth a little. Softening those facial features and just noticing the difference. We tend to hold on to stress in such subtle ways that it can really make a huge difference to our general being. To just drop our shoulders, unlock our jaw and soften our face. Now let's take our attention towards our mind. Those wandering, cluttered thoughts and worries. Let's take an imaginary broom and start to sweep the mind clear, leaving it empty and clean, visualizing our mind as a room with only our breath rushing in and out. No thoughts, no worries. Forgetting everything you needed to do before, everything you need to do after. This is your time, it's just for you. I'm feeling grateful here as we breathe for this connection to all of you, for this time to practice, 
to focus on our breath and our bodies. To try and clear our mind of anything that's not serving us. And gently take your chin towards your shoulder. It doesn't matter which one. And roll your chin all the way around to the other one. And gently rolling that head backwards and forwards in time with your breath. And maybe you want to take it the whole way around. Take a full head roll. And maybe you want to take it back the other way. And gently just rolling those shoulders up towards your ears, down your spine, just loosening up. Let's take a little twist through the spine. Take your right hand behind you so it acts as a secondary spine. And your left hand comes to the outside of your right knee. Sit up tall, drop the shoulders down, gaze over that right shoulder. And gently push that right knee away with your left hand twisting your spine. So twists, we like them. They compress our organs and they release any toxins we might be holding onto in our blood, in our organs. And when we release the twist, inhale, bring yourself back to center. We're allowing fresh blood to flow through. Take your left hand behind you like a secondary spine, right hand to the outside of the left knee, Gentle twist, gaze over that left shoulder, inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, push that knee away. And feel that release in the spine as you twist. And please avoid this if you're pregnant. And gently bring yourself back to center. Drop your right ear onto your right shoulder. And maybe you want to reach that right arm up and just take hold of your left ear and gently pull, so you're stretching down the left side of the neck. You, you can deepen this stretch by straight, straightening that left arm out and just trickling those fingers along the left. So you're getting a stretch from the fingers all the way up to the ears. Feel free to also hover those fingers off the mat if you want to. Just gently waking up the body. And letting go. Trickle those right fingers out in the line with the right hip. Drop the left ear to the left shoulder. And maybe you want to reach that left arm up. Take hold of your right ear now and gently pull. So you feel that stretch from the ear all the way down the neck, all the way down the arm. Right fingers trickling all the way up. Maybe you want to lift them up. Feel energy shooting out those fingertips. Inhale. Exhale. And gently letting go. Just draw those fingers together at the front, interlace them. Imagine you're hugging a giant beach while pulling those shoulders apart at the back. Inhale here. Doming that spine, making your body like a C shape. Exhale, pushing up towards the sky. Push the airway, drop the shoulders down, neck long. Inhale, taking the arms nice and wide. Start to twizzle your wrists, wiggle your fingers. And then gently drawing those arms behind, pulling those shoulder blades together like chicken wings. Opening up that chest, inhale. Lovely, well done, let go. Bring those palms in front of you and just bring yourself into an all fours position on the mat, stack those joints, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Back nice and straight to begin with, you guys know the drill by now. Inhale. And as we exhale, breathing out nice and loud, like you're fogging up a mirror, like you're a dragon breathing out smoke. And again, inhale. And again, inhale, but this time as you exhale, you're going to keep the mouth closed, but still feel that fogging sensation in the back of your throat. This is your ujjayi breath. And if it sounds a little bit like you're snoring, then that means you're doing it right. Inhale. And 
Lovely. And you can keep that breath going if you want to, or you can return to your normal yogic breath. Pushing down through your palms, pushing into the outside of the little fingers, pushing down through the knees and the tops of the feet, imagining you're almost trying to take off from the mat. Pushing down so the energy is released from the palms and the knees. And maybe you want to tuck those toes under and just lift the knees about five centimeters off the mat. Engage that core, dome the shoulders, rotating them outwards. Breathe here, inhale. And exhale, try and keep that back nice and flat. Inhale, pushing back into your toes, pushing the heels back towards the back of your room. And exhale. Really nice, you're going to feel this in your glutes and your core, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. Exhale, gently drop the knees down. Take that right leg and you're just going to straighten it out behind you, pointing your toe. And then you're going to draw a straight line with your right leg, but you're going to bring it out to the right. So I'm gonna show you from the front what this will look like. So you're pointing that right foot out, your left knee is still bent. Keeping your hips aligned now, we're gonna bring that right hand onto your right thigh and lift that left arm up into your gate pose. And you can start if you want to, if you're happy upright, lovely. If you want to get a nice lateral stretch, start to send the right hand all the way down the right leg and leaning into the right. Drawing your left arm across the top, getting a nice stretch down the left side of the body, a lateral stretch, almost like a little moon kind of shape. And breathe, inhale. Gorgeous, well done. And as you exhale, gently pull yourself out of the stretch, you're gonna reach that right hand down, that left hand down in line with your left knee. My left and right is appalling, you guys probably know that by now. And reach that right arm up. So feel free to stay here in your gate pose. Make sure those hips are stacked on top of each other. If you want to, you can lift that right leg and bring your right arm out in front and breathe in here. And exhale. Well done, lovely. Find a drishti, a place to rest your gaze if you're balancing. And if you want to take a little shoulder stretch here, bend that right leg, reach behind with the right hand and kick the right foot into the right hand and give yourself a little stretch through that right shoulder in here. Keep that neck long, exhale. Well done, looking good everybody. Give me one more breath here wherever you are. Gently release that right leg, bring it back down onto the mat. Bring that right hand back down and bring yourself back into your all fours position. Inhale, we drop our navel to the floor, gaze up towards the sky in your calves. Exhale, arching, pushing the ground away, mobilizing our spine. And again, inhale. And exhale, just getting a little bit of mobility to the spine here. We're not going to get weird just yet. Inhale. And exhale. Gently bring yourself back to center and we're going to take our gate pose on the other side. Take your left leg out behind you and then draw a straight line with that left foot, bringing that left leg in line with your left hip. Right knee down on the mat with your right calf out behind you. Take a nice deep breath, bring that left hand onto your left thigh and reach up with your right arm. And if you want to, you can start to take that lateral stretch Sending the left arm all the way down the left leg, the right arm comes up and over, making you kind of like a little semicircle, a little moon shape. Feeling that stretch all the way down the right side of the body. And as always, our alignment is so important. Imagining that you're squashed between two panes of glass here as you reach. Arm is in line with your ears. Shoulders down, neck long, inhale. Exhale. Well done. Almost like you're trying to add inches onto the right side of the body, inhale. And exhale, bring that right arm back down onto the mat in line with your right knee. Left arm comes up into your gate pose. Hips stacked on top of each other, drawing that abs in, drawing that abs, drawing those abs in. And if you would like to balance, you can lift that left leg, you can bring that left arm out in front. 
and hold here. And if you'd like to take this further still and get a little shoulder stretch, bending that left knee, bring that left hand behind and kick the left foot into your left hand, stretching through your shoulders and your spine. Find a drishti, a place to rest your gaze so that you can focus on your balance. Try not to look at the screen because if I'm wobbling around, you'll fall out of your balance. And breathe. Well done. Take one more breath here, wherever you are. Gently release, bring yourself back into your gate pose and drop the hands, bring yourself into an all fours position on the mat. And now we can get weird. So. If you want to continue with your normal cat cow, dropping your navel down, gaze up towards the sky and exhale into arch, dropping the crown of the head towards the floor. Feel free to continue here, mobilizing the spine. And as always, if you have parts of your body you want to wake up, get weird, get your wiggle on, really get into the hips, the neck, the arms, get into whichever part of your body you need to. Maybe you want to sit back in your child pose and just stretch out your arms and your shoulders. Maybe you want to come all the way forward, give yourself a little wiggle. Really get into all those nooks and crannies in your body. Get nice and crazy. Move those shoulders around, move those hips around. The lovely thing about practicing at home, you really can be as strange as you like and no one will judge you. Wiggling around, give me two more deep breaths here. And once you're done, Drawing your heels together, knees apart, sit back in your child's pose and take a deep breath. Gaze straight ahead between your hands. And just draw that chest along the mat. Bring the feet and knees parallel out behind you. Chest down, sit bones up in your extended puppy pose. Feeling that stretch down the backs of your hamstrings. Feeling that stretch in your chest and your abdomen and your shoulders and your lower back. Really, really opening up the shoulders. If you want to get deeper into your shoulders, you can come up on your fingertips, make them like little spiders. Still gazing straight ahead. Try and make sure that your face is looking straight between your hands. Be in these parallel out behind you. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale here. Yeah. Exhale, place your palms flat and, flat and draw your chest along the mat into your sphinx pose like your little statue in Egypt. Pushing those hip bones down into the mat, forearms parallel. And you want to make sure you're activating the bottom half of our body here as well. So we point our toes, lift our knees off the mat and you're going to feel that engagement in your butt, in your glutes, in your hamstrings, in your lower back. Drawing those shoulders down, necks long, Inhale here, nice strong sphinx pose. And as you breathe, we're going to take our right arm out to the side of the mat. I had a lot of people really like this shoulder stretch, so we're going to incorporate it as much as we can. And as you take that right arm out to the side, I'm just going to drop the camera a little so you can see what I'm doing. As you bring that right arm out to the side, you're going to gently roll onto your right hip and drop your right ear to the mat and really roll into that shoulder. So if you've got tight shoulders, this is my favorite shoulder opener of all time. Take your left hand, come up on your left fingers and bend that left elbow just to get a little bit extra push. You can bring that left leg out behind you. And if you want to get even deeper, bend the left knee and plant that left foot nice and flat. Inhale, really roll into that shoulder opener. And exhale. Feel it kind of melting open as you roll deeper onto it. If it hurts at any point, just pull yourself out back to your sphinx pose. And we're all going to gently roll back to centre. We always pass through our sphinx on the way to the other side. So engaging, point those toes, lift the knees, engage those glutes, the lower back, draw those shoulders down, gaze straight ahead, inhale. Exhale, reach that left arm out to the side, rolling onto your left hip, left ear to the mat, lifting up on those right fingertips, balancing on those left hips, inhale. Start to draw that right leg behind you. And if you want to get deeper, bend that right knee, plant the right foot nice and flat, and just roll into that left shoulder. 
Really nice inhale. And exhale, roll even deeper. And gently bring yourself back to center, back to your Sphinx pose. Feel free to stay in your Sphinx. If you want to come a little higher into your Cobra pose, then please do. That will get a deeper stretch through the spine, the abdomen, the chest, and in the glutes as well. Pointing those toes, making sure those knees are lifted. So if you want to stay in your static Cobra or Sphinx, that's lovely. If you want to get a little bit of movement, we're going to inhale, drop forward. Exhale, we rise. Inhale. And exhale. Feel free to do this without your hands on the mat as well. You probably won't get as high, but it's working with strength in your spine and your chest. Well done. And lower. And lift. And lower. And last time. And lowering down, but still gazing straight ahead. Let's take our locust pose. Bring your arms out behind you. Lift the chest, the head, the neck, and the shoulders and the arms. Maybe you're happy with just the top half of your body. Maybe you want to add your legs in as well. So you're balancing on those hip bones. Make sure if you're pregnant that you avoid this one. Gazing straight ahead and really breathe into this stretch. This is really good for releasing lower back pain. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, one more. And gently drop down, bring your left ear to the mat and gaze to the right. And right ear to the mat and gaze to the left. And bring your palms in front, take a deep breath. Push yourself into your upward facing dog. Make sure the tops of the feet are down on the mat, shoulders down. Tuck those toes under. Downward facing dog. So first downward dog of the class, if you want to bend your knees, please do. I always tend to bend my knees for the first few just so I can really, really loosen myself up. I have very tight hamstrings and calves. So if you also suffer from tight hamstrings and calves, we definitely recommend bending those knees. So downward dog, what are we doing here? Push into the outside of your palms and your little fingers. Turn those elbows out slightly. Maybe they have a very gentle bend. Rotate the shoulders outwards. Try not to collapse them inwards. And gazing between your arms, between your legs and let your navel. Heels trying to draw down towards the earth. And most importantly, a nice straight back all the way from the tip of your tailbone down to your arms. If you want to straighten your legs, that's absolutely fine. Draw that navel in towards your spine and take a deep breath here, inhale. And as we inhale, we're going to raise up on our heels, raise up on our toes, lifting the heels and exhale, lower the heels down onto the mat. Inhale, we rise. This is lovely for tight hamstrings and calves. Feel that pull on the back. Exhale, lower. And again, lift. And lower, trying to maintain the same shape as you lift. And lower, well done. And once more. And lower, inhale. We're going to bring ourselves forward into a plank position, core engaged. Make sure those wrists are underneath your shoulders. And drop those knees down towards the mat. Push the bum back towards the heels and push up into your downward dog. So we're gonna take a few of those little circles. Inhale, we wave forward, high plank, core engaged. And dropping the knees down towards the mat, but just letting them float, send the bum back towards the heels, up into your downward facing dog. And again, wave forward, high plank, body in a nice straight line. Exhale, to drop the knees, but just let them hover, bum back towards the heels, sending yourself up, downward facing. And again, drop forward into your high plank. Knees down, bum back, pushing up, down facing dog. Let's go for one more. Wave forward, high plank. Drop those knees, send the bum back, down we're facing. Feel free to bicycle those legs here if you want to. And we're just going to take that right foot and gently draw a little circle behind the left foot and just open the hip out to the right. 
gazing underneath the right armpit, push down through both hands, make sure there's an equal distribution of weight. Gently draw that right foot back around. Take the left foot now and draw a circle behind the right foot. We're just giving ourselves a little twist, open up the hips, gaze underneath the left armpit, inhale. Exhale, bring yourself back to center, take a nice deep breath, and you're going to drop back down into your plank position. If you want to stay here, by all means stay in your plank, make sure you're rotating those shoulders outwards. If you want to get into your forearm plank, we're just going to work our abs here. So you can either hold your forearm plank or you can take a little rock, push yourself to the edge, so you're going to push yourself forward and back. We're going to go five. And back, engaging as you go forward. And back, three. And back, two. And back, and one. Really nice, this is good for your abs, your cores, and your shoulders. Start to walk those feet in towards you, bringing yourself into your dolphin pose. So if you're taking your plank, you're now bringing yourself back into your downward dog. Everyone else, dolphin. Kind of like a way more intense, more horrible version of downward dog. Engaging that core. Take a nice deep breath. You're going to bring yourself forward as though you're going to kiss the mat. And back. And forward. And back. Let's go five. And back. Four. And back. Three. And back. Well done. Two. And back. Last one. And back, drop those knees down onto the mat, bringing yourself into kind of forearm, all fours position. Send your left arm underneath the right. And just gazing underneath your right armpit, threading the needle, giving yourself a little shoulder stretch after those little strengthening exercises. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, gently pull yourself back out. Take that right arm now, bring it underneath the left armpit and gaze underneath your left, gazing down those right fingertips. Inhale. And feel that opening in the shoulders. Exhale. Gently bring yourself back to center. Take a nice deep breath, push down through your palms, tuck those toes under. And you're going to push up into your downward facing dog. Take a nice deep inhale, pushing down through your palms, send that right leg back up towards the sky, three legged dog. And drawing that right knee forward towards the chest, plant that right foot and bring yourself up into a high lunge. Arms in line with your ears, stacking the shoulders on top of the hips. So you want to make sure you're not leaning forward. We want to make sure that this is a nice aligned body. Hips under shoulders, arms up. Exhale, sit into that front knee bend. Inhale, open those arms out to the side. Turn your left foot outwards, warrior two. Gazing down those front fingertips, arms in line with your shoulders. And I'm just going to move the camera, sit there in your warrior two. So from your warrior two, take a nice deep breath. We're gonna drop that right arm down on to your right thigh, and you're gonna circle that left arm all the way around, bringing it overhead, extended side angle pose. So make sure you're still lifting up through the chest here. We're not kind of hanging out of the pub, we're just slouching. Still making a nice straight line from the left foot all the way up to left fingers. This is a really good one for your abs if you're engaging properly, lifting up, inhale. Exhale, start to open both arms, making sure the shoulders are on top of each other. And gently straightening both legs, bringing yourself into your extended triangle pose. And try and gaze up at your extended arm if you can. If you want to make sure that your hips are aligned, take your left hand into the small of your back and gently push yourself into alignment. Imagine that you're up against a wall or you're being popped into a toaster. That's how aligned your body wants to be. And if your hand is not in line with your ankle, don't worry. As long as you feel like you're squashed between two panes of glass, your hand can really be anywhere on your leg. Take a nice deep breath here. As you exhale, bring yourself back up to standing. Bring those hands onto your hips. 
turn those hips to face the front. And you're going to very gently step that back foot in slightly. And we're going to start to pivot forward into our pyramid pose, hinging at the hips. Try and make sure that that hip doesn't open. Both legs stay straight ahead. Inhale, we start to fold forward. And if you are happy coming halfway, lovely, you want to bring those hands down on either side of that front foot and start to glue the torso onto the thigh. Really getting a nice deep hamstring stretch. Make sure that there's an equal distribution of weight here. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And bringing both palms down on either side of that front foot if you haven't already. Give yourself a little gentle bend and you're going to place the palms flat and lift up onto that standing right leg. Bring yourself into a standing split. So standing split is probably not going to look like an actual split. It's just going to be bringing that left leg out behind you. Try and keep those hips aligned. Take a nice deep breath here and hold. And then we're going to take a little stretch here. So you're going to bend that left knee, bend the right knee and drop that left knee down to the right ankle. And then straighten. And dropping down. And straighten. And give me three. And straighten. Two. And straighten. Lovely. And one. And straighten, and from your standing split, you're gonna bring yourself back down onto the mat into a lunge position. Walk those hands around into the center of your mat, bringing yourself into a wide leg forward fold. Turn both feet to face outwards. Inhale here and start to walk the hands back so they're in line with your feet, drawing the crown of the head down towards the mat. Inhale. And exhale, lengthening through the spine. This is another really good one for lower back pain. And the aim is to get the crown of the head all the way down onto the mat. And make a little table for your hands and your head, a little tripod. And if you are there, feel free to take your headstand. If not, don't worry, we're just gonna hold this stretch. If you are taking headstand, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time. And I want all of you that aren't taking headstand to really, really feel that stretch through the hamstrings. If you're not taking headstand as well, you can just bring yourself over to the right and just give yourself a little stretch on each, each side, reaching for the right foot, reaching for the left. And if you're taking headstand, take, your, take a nice deep breath, gently bring yourself down. And we're gonna walk our hands through to the center and flatten our backs. So if you do want a block or anything here, then please feel free to use something. Otherwise, you're gonna drop that right hand onto the mat and we're gonna lift up with the left arm. Stack those shoulders on top of each other and try and gaze up at the left in your star pose. So you want the arms stacked on top of each other. Try to bring your body into the center. So this is what you're gonna look like, kind of like a straight line with, well, you kind of look like the Deathly Hallows, actually. And gazing up at that extended arm, if you can. Take a nice deep breath. And gently drop that arm back down. Walk those hands around to the right foot. Turning that right foot and the left foot out. Place the palms flat. Step back into a plank position. Core engaged. I'm going to switch sides again. So you can either push straight up into your downward facing dog from here, or you can take a vinyasa with me, tuck those elbows in, come down, push forward, up with facing dog, and push back, down with facing, lovely everybody. Let's do the other side. Send that left leg all the way up towards the sky, three legged up, drawing that left knee in towards the chest, and plant that left foot. Grounding through your left foot, make sure the left ankle is underneath the left knee. Arms up in line with your ears into your lunge. Make sure those hips are under your shoulders. Knee under, knee above your ankle. Inhale, exhale, sit into that front knee bend. Lovely, turn that right foot out. Arms in line with the shoulders. Warrior two, tuck that tailbone under, opening out that chest. Lovely. 
Take a nice deep breath, drop that left arm down onto your forearm, bring that right arm up and over. Bring your left forearm onto your left thigh, bring that right arm up and over. Straight line from your right fingers all the way down to your right foot and try and keep that chest nice and open. Inhale. Exhale, remember we're not hanging out at the pub. Keep that neck long. Take a nice deep breath here, start to open those arms out to the side. And straighten both legs, bring yourself into your triangle pose. And if you wanna make sure that those hips are aligned, take that right hand, bring it into the small of your back and gently push those hips into alignment. You can also do the stretch up against a wall if you would like to. That makes sure that your alignment is really, really perfect. Make sure those shoulders are on top of each other so you're not leaning forward or back. And try and gaze up at that extended arm if you can, inhale. And exhale. And inhale, well done. Exhale, gently bringing yourself back into a standard position. Bring those fingers and thumbs onto your hips. Turn your hips to face straight ahead and gently step that back foot in slightly. We're bringing ourselves into our pyramid pose. So hips are squared forward. What you want to avoid here is, I'm always cutting my head off in this stretch. You just gently move that and that. So what you want to avoid is a naughty open hip. So we want our hips, and try not to fall over either. We want our hips facing straight ahead, finger and thumb on our hip bone. So I always use that to kind of steer me straight ahead like car headlights. Both legs nice and straight, equal distribution of weight. And we're gonna to start to pivot forward, hinging at the hips, bringing ourselves into our pyramid. So if you want to, you can bring those hands down either side of that front foot and start to glue the torso to the thigh. And get nice and deep into that stretch, inhale. Exhale, try and keep your back flat. So if you don't get super deep into the stretch, don't worry. And if you wanna bring your hands onto your calf or onto your thigh, then please do. You don't have to come down onto the mat. You can also use blocks under your hands or chunky books or, um, Packets of baby wipes, whatever works for you as a block. Inhale. And exhale. Take one more deep breath here. Gaze straight ahead, slight bend in that front knee. Push the palms flat and lift yourself into your standing split. Lovely, well done. And take a nice deep breath here. You're going to bend that right knee and drop the right knee down to meet the left ankle. And straighten and drop and straighten well done and drop and straighten let's go for three and straighten and two and straighten and one and straighten really nice and then gently step back into that lunge position walk those hands around to the center bring yourself in to your wide leg forward fold and take a nice deep breath here. Bring your left hand down onto the mat, bringing our back nice and flat. So we've got a nice straight back. Left hand down, right arm up, making that deathly hollow shape. Gaze up at that extended arm. You wanna make sure those shoulders are on top of each other. Arms in a nice straight line. So you want your body almost, you want your body, your head and your arms in the absolute center of your legs, inhale. So if you've got a camera, you can see this shape. And breathe. Feeling that twist, feeling that hamstring stretch. Take one more deep breath here. Drop both hands down. And walk your hands towards the front. Bring those hands on either side of that front foot. And you're going to step the right foot in to meet. Bring yourself into your Uttanasana, your forward fold. Taking hold of your elbows and just gently giving yourself a little sway from side to side. Keep those knees bent, glue the torso onto your thigh. Only straight your legs in your forward fold if you're really confident that your back can stay nice and flat. Inhale. And exhale. And this time as you inhale, take your palms, gently draw them up your feet, up your shins towards your thighs, flat the back. Exhale back to your forward fold, bend the knees. 
Inhale again, bring your palms up the shins towards the thighs, flatten the back toward the navel in. Exhale, forward fold. And last time, draw the palms up the shins towards the thighs, flatten the back, gaze straight ahead. Exhale, forward fold. Keeping those knees bent, draw those feet together, feel an equal distribution of weight from the front of your foot to the back. Inhale, bring those arms out in front and bring yourself up into your chair pose. Sitting back into that imaginary chair, nice straight line, tuck that tailbone under, inhale. Imagine you've got a block between your legs that you're trying to keep in there. You're trying to engage those thighs, engage the glutes, engage the core, inhale. Exhale, sit deeper into that chair pose. And from here, gently drop back down into your forward fold, straighten the legs. And slight bend in the legs, reaching up back into your chair pose, arms in line with your ears, shoulders long, shoulders down, arms long. And sitting into that imaginary chair, sit deeper and hold. And exhale, dropping back into your forward fold, place the palms flat, slight bend in the knees, mid step, float or jump back into your plank position. So you can either push straight up into your downward dog or join me for a vinyasa, tuck those elbows in, come down. Push forward, up with facing dog. And push back, down with facing. Walk those feet out here. Feel that stretch on the back of your legs. Just gonna move the camera again. Really nice, make sure that there's a straight line from your tailbone all the way down to your arms. Even when you're bicycling those legs, make sure you don't kind of drop down into a plank sort of position. Gaze straight ahead between your hands, slight bend in the knees and step for a little jump through into a seated position on your mat, a little bit grace, more gracefully than I just did. Bring your feet nice and flat on the mat. And we're going to take our boat pose, which is a really good one for our abs. So option one, you can have your hands on the mat, balance on those sit bones, bring your feet into a tabletop position. So if you're happy here, keep that back nice and flat, core engaged, lovely. If you want to go a little deeper, you can bring your, oh, I even missed a step. You can bring your hands in line with your legs, lifting them up so that you're balancing on those sit bones. Keep that spine nice and straight. Maybe you want to go deeper still and straighten both legs. You'll feel that nice shaking feeling. Keep that neck long and balanced here. Give me five, four, well done. Three, two, and one. Very slowly now, we're going to start to straighten our body out. Straightening out. Bringing that spine down one vertebrae at a time, but keep the legs floating about 10 centimeters off the mat, gazing at your hands, lifting that head and that shoulders in your dish pose. Feel that engagement in your abs. Give me 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let go. Bring yourself down into the mat. Take your arms out on either side. And just gently bring your knees into that tabletop position. And we're going to drop both knees over to the left, gaze to the right. Giving ourselves that nice twist through the spine, gazing down those fingertips. And then gently drop those knees over to the right and gaze to the left. And once more, knees to the left, gaze to the right. And knees to the right, gaze to the left. So as promised, we are gonna finish up with our shoulder stand. Um, as that was requested yesterday, that we won't work on them. So if you have head stand in your practice and you prefer to take that again, then please feel free. If you are, ladies, if it is that time of the month and you don't want it in birth, that's absolutely fine. You can take your happy baby, taking hold of your feet and gently rocking from side to side. You can take legs up the wall, which is literally 
as though your legs are up against a wall. You can even actually do it against a wall in your home. This is a really, really nice one. It's a very good restorative pose. Um, and everyone else, if you would like to take your shoulder stand, we're gonna draw our knees in towards our chest. Bring the palms into the small of the back and try and walk the elbows in and straighten those legs up above you. You're trying to make that body in a nice straight line. Try and keep that neck free. If you want to, you can try and bring your arms out behind you so that you are literally just balancing on your shoulders. Well done, really nice. Try and make sure that body is nice and straight. You're not kind of leaning forward or hinging at the hips. If you would like to, if you've got the space, you can try different variations here. Try taking your legs nice and wide. You can take your feet together like little palms. If you want to, you can bring your legs all the way over to touch the ground behind you in your plow pose. Or you can hug your knees to your ears, making yourself a tiny little ball. Whichever version you're in. If you feel like it's too much, gently bring yourself out the way you came. And if you're taking headstand and you're bringing yourself out, always take a child's pose after. And if you're in plow pose, we're gonna very gently start to roll ourselves back down onto the mat. And if you're in your shoulder stand, also just rolling yourself back down onto the mat, one vertebrae at a time. And when you reach that flat back position, bring your palms into the small of your back. Might take some shifting around if you don't have much space. Push that chest up towards the sky, let the head roll the whole way back. Point your toes, legs together in your fish pose. This is a really nice way to counter your shoulder stand. Pushing that chest upwards. And breathe. And very gently rolling back down onto your mats. Draw your knees in towards your chest and gently rock from side to side. Maybe you want to windscreen wipe the legs, so bring your feet down and just letting the knees windscreen wipe from side to side. And then bring yourself back to centre. Start to straighten that body out. Bring your hands up above your head. Point those fingers, point those toes. You guys know the drill by now. Biggest stretch of the entire class. Reaching from one side of the room to the other. They've got you by the fingers, they've got you by the toes. You can't get away. You're being pulled. There's tension in every part of your body, including your face. Screw those facial features up. Ugliest face you've ever made in your life. A million double chins. Scrunched up nose, scrunched up eyes, scrunched up mouth. Reaching, reaching, reaching. Shoulders up to your ears. Everything I've told you not to do, do it now. And if you want to pour on top of this physical tension, all your mental tension as well. Let's take everything that's worrying us, everything that's frustrating us, pour it all in. We're gonna make a big old tension bomb and then we're gonna release it. Take everything that's pissing you off and pour it into this stretch. You're being pulled from one side of the room to the other. Add to that tension, the most tension you've ever been in your whole life. Keep stretching, keep stretching. Five, four, three, two, and one, let go, bring those arms down by your side. Palms facing up, put feet falling open. And now is the time if you would like to get socks, a jumper, a blanket, a glass of water. If you want to dim your lights, please do. You can take your Shavasana however you would like. I think it's really nice to take it lying down on your mat, but if you would prefer to take it seated, that is completely up to you. 
Um, if anyone pregnant is still with me, please make sure that you are taking your Shavasana lying on your left hand side in a fetal position with a pillow between your knees. Otherwise, everyone find a nice comfortable space on your mat. Palms falling open, feet falling open, eyes closed. And just bring yourself back to where you were at the beginning of the class. Inhale, expand the abdomen, send all of that air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And as you exhale, reversing that breath and drawing the navel in towards the sun. Focusing in on that breath, washing through you. And just checking in with those tension points. Shoulders down, neck long. Jaw unlocked, back teeth not touching, tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. Facial features soft and gentle. Sweeping our mind clear of clutter and thoughts. Let's take our attention to our feet. Feel them fall open, each toe unraveling. Ankles, calves, knees and thighs. As though someone has taken the battery out of us, they fall open. All the way up to the base of your spine and feeling each vertebrae unravel one by one, melting down into the mat like lava. All the way up to your shoulders and feeling them draw down your spine away from your ears, leaving your neck long. Your jaw soft, facial features softer, head light and free of worry. Arms lightweight at your side and each fingertip unraveling to expose your palms to the sky. And finally, take your attention to your chest and your abdomen. That slow and steady rise and fall of your breath, gently guiding you into a deeper sense of calm. Pushing away anything that doesn't serve us and focusing only on that slow and steady inhale. And exhale. Gently start to wiggle those fingers and toes to draw awareness back into your body. Hugging your knees in towards your chest and gently rocking from side to side, massaging your spine on the mat. And bring yourself all the way over to the right hand side into a fetal position.
and gently bring yourself up to seated, keeping the eyes closed. And take a nice deep inhale. And on your exhale, let out a deep sigh. <sighs> and again, inhale. And exhale. <sighs> One more time, deepest sigh, inhale. <sighs> Draw your palms together at heart center. Thank you all so much for practicing with me. Have a lovely rest of your evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Namaste. As always, it's such a pleasure to practice with all of you.